Hello everybody, today I'm going to be talking about bubble rafts and why we use them. This picture here is a picture of a bubble raft. This is a, an invention from the mid 20th century, the 1950s to 1960s or so, and the reason why it was used is to visualize the way atoms act and the way that uh, grains act when placed under stress uh, in a crystal. So as you can see here, you've got uh, some grain boundaries here. You've got vacancies, you've got dislocations, and so this pretty closely approximates what a random crystal uh, of some substance would look like if you took a flat slice of it and looked at a cross section from, uh, from above or from the side. Now the reason why this is useful is because you can watch in real time what the bubbles do when you place them under stress or remove atoms and so on and so forth. Here, for example, is what, what happens when a bubble raft is put gradually under stress. Now you can see here that there are grain boundaries, for example, right here. And you can see that as you stress and squish this bubble raft, you will be able to see the dislocations move here and you can see the way that these grain boundaries right here shift slightly and so this is how atoms in a crystal react and how the grains in said crystal react uh, just like this bubble raft even though they're two completely different substances and so that's why this is so useful An interstitial impurity is when a larger or smaller foreign atom is put into a lattice structure. So in our bubble wrap picture on the right, there's a larger interstitial impurity. This creates a compressive force, while a smaller interstitial impurity will create a tensile strain. This is significant because as dislocations are traveling through our lattice structure, they also have a compressive and tensile side and like a magnet they can get caught on these interstitial impurities and this creates a resistance to slippage. This is done often for metal alloys. Next we have vacancy and a phenomenon called climbing. So on the left in our bubble raft you can see a picture of the vacancy which is just a lack of bubble and then on the right we have a little diagram showing climbing. So the square is the vacancy and the T-shape is the dislocation. So normally a dislocation can only travel horizontally, but because of this vacancy and the fact that it doesn't have to force through an atom and it can actually just move the vacancy with it, it can slide down. Finally we have grain boundaries in high angle versus low angle. So it's considered high angle if it's greater than 15 degrees. So looking on the left picture in the dotted lines, you can tell it's a grain because each column is parallel with each other, but it reaches a boundary as the yellow solid line intersects the blue solid line. This is significant because say we have a dislocation traveling along the yellow line, it'll actually have to change direction to keep traveling and so grain boundaries can basically stop dislocations and cause something called a stack up. Dislocations are another type of defect in crystal structures where the atoms are out of the general orderly structure of the crystal. Dislocations are generated and move when a stress is applied, allowing slip and plastic deformation to occur. When, which you can see here in this next slide. It's hard to catch, but it's those two lines moving parallel to each other, moving the whole structure just slightly. All right, so we're gonna go over what a Burgers, Burgers vector is, how to draw one, and what it represents. So the basic idea is within any crystal structure, you should be able to draw a nice closed circuit, assuming you move in each direction the same amount. So, or so if we move to the right three, down five, to the left three, up five, you can see we get a nice closed circuit. And that same thing applies, it doesn't matter how much you can move, seven to the right, three to the right, you know, down five. As long as you move to the left the same way you move to the right and up, and 
up the same as down, you will make this nice closed circuit. And you'll see that that even holds true when you have a vacancy. So right here, there's an atom missing, circled in blue. And if we draw seven to the right, seven down, seven to the left, and seven up, you see we still get a nice closed circuit because this missing atom doesn't actually change the structure at all. It just, you know, there happens to be one bubble missing, but the structure remains intact. However, if we go up here to this green circle where we have a dislocation, you see that the same no longer holds true. If we draw seven to the right, seven down, seven to the left, and seven up, you see we don't actually fully connect. We don't close our circuit. And you can see this, this gap here, this distance of, you know, one bubble in this direction, right? You can you can you almost draw an arrow saying like look this is this area somehow this part of the box has shifted one down in this direction and that is our Burgers vector and it shows how much this dislocation has affected the crystal structure in this area um, and so that's how you draw Burgers vector that's what it means it, it kind of shows uh, gives us a way to quantify the dislocation and its effect on the crystal structure so then if we go to this video here and we look at actually, we can look at how dislocations interact with grain boundaries, and that's a very interesting thing. So, right here, you'll see we have a grain boundary. You have, you know, in the atoms here are moving in like aligned in this direction. All of a sudden, they hit this bent, this grain boundary, and they bend over, right? So that's, there's a grain boundary here, and you can think of this grain boundary as a group, an array of um, dislocations, and so you can imagine that dislocations would interact with a grain boundary much in the same way they would interact with another dislocation. And so you'll see we have dislocations that um, will hit this grain boundary and disappear, or maybe they hit the grain boundary and change the angle a little bit, move the grain boundary, or maybe they even hit the grain boundary and kind of like bounce off or, refra or you know, get refracted into a different um, angle with maybe a different magnitude. So let's watch the video. Pay attention to this area right here. And you will see, you know, certain how these grain boundaries and dislocations interact. So here you have this, you know, like for example, here we have a nice dislocation just disappears right into the grain boundary. You can actually see the grain boundary shifting a little bit, you know, where it is moves. And you get play things where you have, you know, a dislocation comes up from one direction and kind of bounces off in a different direction. So that kind of shows how those same dislocations um, interact with grain boundaries.